Adding voice comments to a student's work is really very easy. And once you learn how, you're likely to use it in our purposes as well, such as online discussions. First off, there's two ways to add voice to a student's work. One is to record it directly into the assignment itself, and the second is to record it separately and then add it to the assignment later. I'm going to start by showing you how to record your voice separately. Start by downloading Audacity, a free open source audio recording and editing program that's pretty much the standard for free systems. You can find it at SourceForge, a website with a variety of really good open source programs, such as OpenOffice, which is a popular alternative to Microsoft Office. I'd suggest you snoop around a little bit to see what you can find here. There's a lot of good stuff. Once you get to the website, search for Audacity and download it to your machine. Now, happily, you're given the option of creating a desktop icon with the install, which I highly recommend since it saves you the step of having to search your programs for it every time you want to record some. You simply click the attractive icon and away you go. You're also going to want to accept any plugins that come with it since these are needed for some really helpful functions. Now you can record. Recording is very simple. Just go up to this red button, hit the red button, and start talking. Hi Mary, I really like the work you did here. However, one thing I did find lacking is, when you wanted to stop recording, hit the stop. And there it is. I'm going to hit the back button. When I hit play, start talking. Hi, Mary. I really like the board. now you're not going to hear it very well because it's coming on my speakers, but the quality is actually very, very good. By the way, make sure that you get a decent headset microphone rather than, say, use an external microphone, say the one that comes with a laptop or just freestanding. Headset is just much better quality. It's worth the $30, $40, $50 investment, especially if you want to do recordings for presentations or something a little more permanent. Now, when you record comments for a student's work, don't worry about editing out the ums and the ahs and the pauses. We don't edit out what we're saying live, and this is basically just speaking what you'd say live online. Just say what you want to say, save, and put it in the document. However, if you are recording for something more permanent, say an online presentation, you're probably going to want to edit out the mistakes. Here's a trick. I'm going to start again by simply deleting out this track. All you have to do is hit the X and it's gone. I'm going to hit record. Now when we look at Plato's work, we find... Now when we look at Socrates' work, we find that he always... Notice what I did. When I made a mistake, I paused for a few seconds. The reason I did is that this gives me a flat line, and that flat line will make it easy to find and edit later on. It gives me a nice wide space to insert the blade, so to speak. You also want to restart from the last natural break so that you have a little bit of a flat line at the front end of the delete as well. What you're going to do is simply speak through to the end of your presentation, simply restating everything you made as a mistake. Don't start at the beginning because it's going to take you forever if you have to restart five minute presentations 15 times. Then when you go back, you're going to edit out all the mistakes. Since I have a flat line here, I just have to put my cursor at the front end, drag it, hit delete, and it's gone. Saving involves two steps, although you can skip the first step if you'd like. This is important. When I hit file, if I go to save project as, it's going to save the project as an Audacity project, AUP. Now this is called a native file format. It's a format that only works in Audacity. Essentially, you save it in that format if you want to edit it later. So for something permanent that you may want to make changes to later, you want to first save it in this format. Keep in mind, this format will not play on any other device. This is not what you're going to actually give to the student or use in any other way. When you want to create a file that you're actually going to use outside of Audacity, you go to File, and you hit Export. Now you'll notice the types include MP3 and WAV, as well as some other types. These are formats that are universal. These sound formats will work on any device that can take sound. And WAV and MP3 are the two most common. Either of those will work. So you want to save in those formats. So I'm just going to hit Test 1. I'll put it on my desktop and it will save. It saves very quickly. Now let's take a look at putting it in a document. I'm going to show you how to import a sound file into Microsoft Word. 
Now, if you have Word 2007 or earlier, it's actually very simple. In fact, you didn't have to record outside of it. For Word 2007 or earlier, all you do is go to Insert, you go to Object, click Object, and then as you scroll down, you're going to see an option of a WAV file. Now, I don't have that, but you would see it here. If you click that option, you're going to get a little recording device that looks like this. At this point, you simply hit the red button, record, and then stop and save at the end, and it records right into the document. Unfortunately, that feature was eliminated in 2010 and later. So if you have 2010 or 2013, you're going to have to record outside the document and then import it. But in that case, again, you're going to go to Insert. Again, you're going to go to Object, Object again, and go down, and this time you're going to hit Package and OK. Now it's going to look for a file. So you're going to find the file that you just recorded, find the file, and hit Open. Hit Next, Finish, and notice it lands right here as an icon. Now the student can simply double click the icon and play it. There's one other way to record if you have Word 2010 or later, and that's to use the Microsoft Sound Recorder. What you do is come over to your Microsoft Globe, your Start Globe, hit it, and look for Sound Recorder, and here we go. Click that, and you notice you get a little device up here. That's simply a separate sound recording program that comes with Windows. Now you simply click the red button, start recording. Hi Mary, I really like this work in general. However, some of your problems were the following. I click stop recording, and now it gives me the option to save, hit save. And now I'd actually do the exact same thing as I did before. Go to insert, object, once again down to package, browse, and again I scroll down to test, I open it, and there it is. So that's simply a separate way of recording outside of Word 2010 or 13. So it's really very easy. Try it yourself.